Uh, we have Reggie Smith. Uh, Reggie is a former shark patient and she volunteers in many shark committees and to improve the quality of patient care. She serves on the Shark Foundation Board, the Women's Council for Mary Birch Integrative Healing Committee, Patients Advisory Board, and the Arts for Healing Committee, among many other voluntary efforts. She has assisted in creating the Arts for Healing Program, Art Group at Shark Mary Birch on the fourth floor for high-risk pregnancy mothers, as well as participating in every integrative healing forum at Shark. So welcome, Reggie. You know, when I knew that I was going to have to have a complete knee replacement, I began to find out a little bit about that, and I found that knee replacement surgery is one of the most painful recoveries that you can have in surgery. So I wasn't foolish about what was facing me. But, but I also had some very serious concerns about opioids in the United States and what's happening to them. And I did some research on that, and I found that I live in the greatest country in the world, but one person dies every five hours because of opioid overdose and no one was doing anything. And in my area where I was born, a little town with 1,800 people in West Virginia has one drugstore. In 2016, that drugstore ordered in and dispensed 200 million opiates, and no one did a thing about that. I was concerned that one of my friends had a complete hip surgery only six months before, and her physician sent her home with 80 oxycodone pills, and with the promise that if she needed more, just call when they would renew the prescription. And at the end of taking 160 oxycodone pills, you're all professionals, I don't tell you what would happen to that patient. So I wanted to use this opportunity because I'm an advocate. I wanted to use this opportunity as a platform to talk about opiates. And, I, and that was the first platform. The second was I really believed there was another way to heal my body, and that was through integrative medicine. I knew nothing about integrative medicine a year and a half ago, so I asked to be put on the committee. The first time I went to the committee meeting, I was astonished at what fantastic people were sitting around that table, how dedicated they were, how passionate they were at looking at an alternate way of healing our bodies. So I said, I think I can't talk about integrative medicine unless I try it and I'm going to try it with no opioids. So the first night that I was in the hospital after my surgery, Amy Andrews came into my room. I was still off in La La Land, but Amy had a smile on her face, a guitar on her back, and she said, hi Reggie, I came in to sing. And I thought, is she out of her mind? <laughs> so she undaunted, Amy pulled her chair up by my bed, started strumming her guitar, and she said, I know you like opera, but we're singing Patsy Cline. <laughs> oh my God, so she started singing Patsy Cline, and I'm thinking to myself, sing on, because I do like Patsy Cline. And the first thing I knew, I'm singing Patsy Cline with her, whether I wanted to or not. So she said, hey, that was great, let's sing another one. So we sang another song, and then a third one. And then she said, well, that's enough. I don't want to tire you out. I'm going to come back and see you another day. And that was the beginning of my integrated medicine. And after she left, I felt great. So I got a hold of my super luxurious hospital blanket. I pulled it up around my my neck, because I wanted to go to sleep, and of course my feet stuck out at that point. But I pulled my blanket up, I went to sleep, sound asleep, and didn't wake up until my dedicated nurse came at two o'clock in the morning and said, Reggie, it's time for your meds. And I said, what meds? And she told me five or six things I was going to be taking, one of which was oxycodone. I said, no opiates. She said, you haven't had anything for seven hours and your doctor wants you to have it. I said, you can give me something else, but no opiates. So she went out and brought something else back. I don't know what it was, but promised me it was not an opiate. And I took it and went back to sleep. 
The next day, Heidi Johnson came in with her lovely little kit of lavender oil, <laughs> and she put lavender oil up above my lip. It was wonderful. If you haven't tried it, when you go home after your 10 or 12 hour shift, and you're bone tired, put some lavender oil above your lip, have a cup of hot tea, you will be a whole new person. It works, it's really wonderful. And later that day, someone came in and they did healing touch. Why that works, I don't know. I don't understand it, but let me tell you, it really works. So I used everything that integrated medicine could offer me while I was in the hospital. And it, it made me feel wonderful. I came home on the third day and I was feeling great. My sister had taken my prescription for opiates to the pharmacy and she came back with 60 opiate pills. I immediately sent her to the police station to turn them in so they wouldn't be in my house. So she said to me, hey, you're a fool, we can sell them for $30. <laughs> so I, I said, I think it's better she'd stay under the police station, <laughs> which, which she did. So, and I was doing great. Two o'clock in the morning, I thought my leg had been run over by a trash truck. The block that the surgeon had put in suddenly disappeared, and I began to get an idea of what pain was like, and it was fierce. So I, I said to myself, you know, I'm going to fight this battle without opiates, I don't know how I'm going to do it, maybe with this big bag of frozen peas that I got at Costco, <laughs> but I'm going to battle this. And, and I looked at pain as my enemy. I called it Old Slewfoot. Anybody ever see The Yearling, the movie The Yearling? Yeah. Old Slewfoot was the grizzly that tormented that family. So I called my pain Old Slewfoot and figured I was going to beat it one way or the other. But, you know, I, I kept fighting that pain and it wouldn't go away. And I remembered someone said, don't lay in your bed, get in a recliner, put pillows all around you, and maybe you can get a little bit of sleep. And it worked a little, but the pain was still there. The next day, Sharp Home Healthcare sent Yvonne, the most wonderful guardian angel in the world, who is a physical therapist. And she said, we're gonna work on your knee and I'm gonna help you fix it and she began to start my exercise program. But what she did is she used ice therapy. If you don't know about that, it's great. Ice therapy, you put an ice on your hands and you run wherever the place is, it's great. So since I only have a minute, I want to tell you that I changed my thinking about pain and I realized that pain was not my enemy but was my friend that they had cut my muscle, they had cut my nerve tissue, they scraped my bone, they'd done everything mean to my body, and it was trying to heal. So I said, pain is my friend, I have to work with it, it's going to make me better. That changed my whole attitude, it helped me heal, and I just, you know, the message I want to give you is, when you, tomorrow, when you see your patient, don't think of Reggie Smith. I want you to think of that person as somebody that needs you to care about them other than just give them medicine. Go around to the other side of the bed. Don't go to the one with all the stuff hanging. Go to the other side of the bed. Take their hand and say, I'm Nancy. I'm your nurse today. I'm here to help you. What can I do to make you feel better? And what would you like to talk about with me? You have the healing touch in the palm of your hand. And believe me, we need it when we're in the hospital. So don't be afraid to use it. And I, I want to thank you for giving me a wonderful sharp experience, a great sharp experience, and how proud I am to see you here learning about integrated healing because it works. And I, I am very happy that I was a sharp patient. Thank you.